Today let's talk about a little lesser known vitamin called vitamin K2 and its relationship with a much more popular one, D3. I'm sure you've heard about vitamin D and how it's good for calcium and our bones. And if you've watched YouTube for 10 minutes, you'll have seen that you must take it with K2. Otherwise it ends up in your arteries. It's scientific, it's urgent, it's everywhere. But here's what most people don't know. Almost no doctors off online platforms recommend it and zero major healthcare organizations endorse it for the general public. As a day-to-day -day NHS GP on the ground, I really want to know the answer to this, so I've had to dig deep to answer three important questions. What's the actual relationship between these vitamins? Why is it a match made in heaven, according to online doctors? And why does mainstream healthcare disagree? Very, very quickly, vitamin D first. We've all heard of this sunshine vitamin. It's essential for our bones. And it's the superstar when it comes to absorbing calcium from our gut into our blood. No vitamin D and calcium goes in one end and strays out the other. So far, straightforward. But what happens once vitamin D has dragged it from the gut into the blood? Enter vitamin K2. Now this vitamin wears a few hats because it helps to clot our blood, which is obviously essential. But today we're purely interested in vitamin K2's relationship with that calcium that's floating around in the blood. And here is where it gets clever. K2 activates a protein called osteocalcin, which drags calcium from the blood and pushes it into the bones. But it doesn't stop there. It also activates another protein called matrix GLA protein. Now this protein lives on the blood vessel walls and when it's activated, it stops calcium from sticking to our blood vessels. So D3 brings in the calcium, K2 tells it where to go. It's like D3 is the delivery driver and K2 is the sat nav. And you can start to see the problem. If we're low in vitamin K2, could that calcium end up where we don't want it, like in our artery walls? And that right there is the heart of the vitamin K, vitamin D debate. So you can see why there are hundreds of videos out there advocating for taking vitamin K with vitamin D. Because the roles of the two vitamins just line up perfectly. The theory is sound and it just makes perfect sense. It sounds obvious, right? Now I'm gonna give you the other side of the argument in just a minute. But before I do, it's important to say this isn't just theory. This is backed up with actual research too. So there are observational studies that suggest that people who eat more K2-rich foods like fermented cheeses, egg yolks, and natto, which apparently taste like glue made out of old socks, tend to have stronger bones and fewer fractures. Some studies even link higher K2 intake to fewer deaths from heart disease. But there are clinical trials as well. Early results, especially in groups like postmenopausal women, hinted at improvements in bone density and markers of bone health when K2 is added alongside vitamin D. This growing level of evidence, early yes, but nonetheless promising, is what fuels the confidence that you see online. So you can see that everything so far shows that it clearly fits, which brings us to the big question. If it all makes so much sense, why isn't it official advice? Why do major health organizations like these ones all suggest that we should all take vitamin D, especially during the winter months, but say nothing about K2? What are they seeing that's making them cautious? That's what I'm gonna unpack next. Firstly, there is a lot of common ground. I would argue there is a consensus that everybody agrees that one of the roles of vitamin K2 is to help direct calcium where to go and to not go. But the more vital question is this, does that mean that everybody needs to take vitamin K2 supplements? And that's where it gets a bit more tricky because while the theory is sound and the research is very encouraging, public health need a lot more than that because it comes down to this, public health need rock solid evidence before they make a recommendation. They can't go around recommend that everybody everywhere takes something that probably helps. It has to definitely help. Is it safe and is it worth the cost 
and the risk to not just you, but to millions of people. And right now, vitamin K2 hasn't quite cleared that bar yet, at least. Think of those observational studies that I mentioned. None of them prove that K2 caused those benefits. And think of those smaller clinical trials. While they are interesting, they often involve specific groups and they haven't yet shown consistent, clinically meaningful improvements in major health outcomes for the general population already taking vitamin D. On the other hand, we have got clear evidence that vitamin D on its own is beneficial, particularly if you're deficient. That's a known problem. Vitamin D is a known benefit. So that's where the focus remains. Vitamin K2, on the other hand, is different. Most people probably get some from their diet and true deficiency is rare. And there's also no universally agreed dose because more vitamin K2 isn't necessarily better because it can interact with medications like warfarin, which means a blanket recommendation carries more risk. So while the evidence is growing and eventually it might become routine recommendation for everybody, it's not quite there yet. So it has to be an individualized decision. So are you getting enough vitamin K2 from the diet? Are you on medications that vitamin K supplements might interact with? Have a chat to your healthcare professional about whether it's right for you. Vitamin D, on the other hand, that does have rock solid evidence, even on its own. And even though today we spoke mainly about bones and hearts, vitamin D does so much more. It's deeply connected to your immune system, your muscles, and even your risk of cancer. So how do you know if you're getting enough? Should you take a supplement? And can you take too much? The answer to those questions is in this video right here, which is actually a far more important video than the one you just watched. So if you've got a few minutes, pop over there. Hopefully I'll see you over there. And thank you very much for watching today.